Welcome family to today's edition of The Model Home. Today we'll be looking at five individuals in scripture whom the Bible clearly mentions the early stages of their lives, how they were trained and the impact they made in society. Then we will learn from them by relating their home life, the future they lived and the impact they created. We established somewhere along those teachings that relationships begin at home, meaning God intended for the home environment to be a place where relationships begin and where relationship skills are learned. The first human relationship that existed was between Adam and Eve in their home, the garden planted by God. So let's get started. Our first example is Joseph. Joseph was a unique young man, the 11th of 12 sons born to Jacob, and his mother was Rachel parents who knew God and reverenced God. Joseph was dearly loved by his father and not very much by his brothers. Their hatred for Joseph was centered around the fact that Jacob loved Joseph more and also because Joseph was a dreamer, which eventually caused them to sell Joseph as a slave to the Midianite traders. Now we come to our verses of interest. Joseph finds himself in Potiphar's house. The Bible says this about, about Joseph's stay in Potiphar's house. Genesis 35 verse 2 to 5, I read this to you from the New Living Translation. It says this, The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. This pleased Potiphar, so he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for, Je for Joseph's sake. All, all his household affairs ran smoothly, and his crops and livestock flourished. Amen. We see here that as a result of his background, Joseph continued to live a life that was pleasing to the Lord. Then Joseph's presence in Potiphar's house was the reason why Potiphar's household flourished, not the other way around. As the story continues, Joseph eventually becomes the second in command in the nation of Egypt. Amen. The next example I'd like us to look at is that of Esther. Esther is an example of a woman who influenced and stirred her environment into godliness as a result of her reverence for God. It all started during her stay with her cousin Mordecai. Esther was an orphan. However, her cousin raised her in the ways of the Lord. We say so because even while in the palace, Mordecai sought to give Esther godly counsel. From the time Esther was recruited and finally became the queen, she showed character of a godly woman, which can be tied to the quality of upbringing she received as a young girl. While in the palace, Esther requested that all her servants fast, including the Jews, which eventually led to a breakthrough for the Jews. Today, the, Jews, the Jewish culture celebrate what we call the Feast of Purim as a way of remembering the victory the Jews had over their enemies. But guess what? It all started from a young girl who was raised by a godly cousin. Amen. Remember, we are looking at biblical examples of people who were taught in their homes and eventually impacted society. Esther's teaching followed her all the way to the palace. I remember Mordecai counseling her at the palace, saying this in Esther chapter 4, verse 13 to 14. It reads, Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Do not think for a moment that because you are in the palace, you will escape when all the Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this. Amen. This was Mordecai's counsel to Esther, even while at the palace. A proof that Esther was brought up by a godly man. Amen. 
Our next example of interest is Samuel. Samuel was a son born to Elkanah and Hannah. At a very young age, when he was weaned, his mother Hannah took him to the tabernacle to serve under priest Eli, a vow she had made to God if he blessed her with a child. And we see this vow in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. Although not under the direct supervision of his parents, they still had an active role to play in deciding where he would be raised. Samuel was groomed in that environment and eventually became a prophet and a judge. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. We see this in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 15. One thing that remained consistent in Samuel's life was his obedience and reverence for God. Even while under training with priest Eli, Samuel obeyed and reverenced God by relaying the news received from God to the priest without compromise. His obedience and reverence to God was a very consistent pattern in his life, even when he became an adult and was entrusted with responsibilities of a judge. I would like us to pay attention to the truth that it all started from home, a godly environment. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 3, we see Samuel showing reverence to God by calling on the Israelites to put away idolatry and return to God. Amen. Our next example of interest is Timothy, another outstanding hero of home training. Paul, writing to Timothy in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, as I read to you from the New International Version, says this, And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, as I read from the New International Version, Paul says this to Timothy, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Amen. There is absolutely no doubt that Timothy was raised by a godly mother and grandmother. And that significantly impacted his future. Later in life, he became Apostle Paul's mentee and grew spiritually mature to a place of influence in the kingdom. Amen. Another example I'd like us to take a look at is Lemuel. The Bible mentions King Lemuel. One thing we, we are certain about his life is that as a young boy in his parents' home, he was taught by his mother. Later in his years as a king, he recounts the teachings of his mother in Proverbs 31 verse 1. I read this to you from the New King James Version. It says this, The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. Amen. You know, the details of these heroes and hearing are necessary because our faith is built in the process and we also get to understand the benefits of investing time to teach our children and those around us. Amen. You know, the common theme among these people include the following. Their relationship with God preceded the success of their environment. The second thing we see here is that their relationship with God was nurtured by a parent or two at their tender ages. And the third thing we see is that they all became significant people in society, and I believe their success was tied to their home life. We see that Joseph became the prime minister in Egypt, Esther became the queen of the Jews, Samuel became the prophet and the judge in Israel, Timothy became an outstanding and influential leader, and Lemuel became king. Amen. Their greatness can be traced back to their home training their godly home training. Amen. So family, it's all about advancing the kingdom of God, even in our homes. Remember, it's all about relationships. Together, we have seen true examples of leaders who emerged from a godly home and changed their society forever. You can do the same for yourself and those around you. 
From your home will come nation builders, kingdom giants, generational pace setters, role models, and pioneers. Amen. Also remember, the model home is not a perfect home. It is an excellent home. Amen.